r slash ask reddit what is a psychological trick you know to really duck with someone silence it's a very effective interview technique because as humans we are conditioned to break silences in conversations i had a conversation with my former boss who was kind of a psychopath he started by saying he needed to ask me a question then he made a bunch of statements and then just stopped and was silent. I assumed his question was implied by the statement so I started to respond to the statements. He cut me off and chastised me for interrupting when he hadn't asked the question yet. Then he did the same thing. Several statements. Then silence. Then I start to talk and get yelled at. He did this three times before finally asking a question. I thought he was absolutely nuts. Later I learned this is a technique people use to establish dominance. When someone needs to establish dominance to work with me, I go find another job. Edit. Wow. Thanks for my first silver. Almost worth having to reboot my whole career. Colon. When you are talking to someone, if you interrupt them and say walk with me in a busy tone and start walking away, they will walk with you and continue the conversation without hesitation. You can let them wherever you want really. I'll never go to your secondary place. Street smarts. I worked with a friend who kept a 12 pack of Mountain Dew under his desk. For a while I'd sneak extra cans back into the box. Not a lot and just enough that he was sure he drank more than the box would hold. He knows. Free drinks. He got me pulled. When you get into an elevator with other people don't turn around to face the doors. It's a common practice in my country and people just stand there being uncomfortable. I hate it. Is your country hell? Immediately after they look at the time. Ask them if they know what time it is. Chances are, they will have to look at the time again. Hell I do this to myself all the time. Stare at their forehead while they are talking. It really freaks people out. Jim was onto something. Generally anywhere that isn't their eyes but forehead works best. My friends always stare at my boobs when we're talking and it drives me insane. Edit. I would like to clarify. I meant more as in anywhere very far away from people's eyes that's still on their person. I think if you look at their nose or mouth it won't really freak them out especially if they're used to you doing that. My eyes have always been ducked up, where one of them sits higher than the other, in order to make it as discreet as possible. It's best to look people in the eye with my higher up eye. The downside to this is that the lower eye is constantly on their chest. Not a big deal most of the time. I'm usually only paying attention to the upper eye and basically filtering out the lower one. But if it's a woman in a low cut shirt that I have to interact with, I have to continue on like my brain isn't getting increasingly uncomfortable with one eye staring into their cleavage. Hand them trash in a conversation. Usually, if you reach out with something the other person will take it and if they're busy talking to you they won't pay attention to what you're handing them. I do it sometimes for fun and the expression I get when they finally look down and realize I just handed them my trash to take care of is great. Yes, I've had this done to me. It fully works effortlessly, but I think that's kinda the point. You just have to confidently pass them the trash like it's theirs. And then it is. It's not really psychological, but let's say someone is 25 or 30 feet behind me while we're both walking down a hallway. There's a 90 degree corner coming up. I round the corner then run really quietly so I'm really far ahead of the person behind me. Then I walk my normal speed again. When they round the corner, they're surprised to see how far away I am now compared to how normal I was walking. You can also do the opposite. Wait until they are about to turn the corner, then start walking again and they will be confused. I think the far away one is better. Could have been checking your phone or something. I forget the exact study, but basically in an office setting you can tell anyone anything and as long as it's on an official memo, anywhere between 60-80% will comply. I think in the study they had it as take this memo to an isolated room, and most people just did it. Wild stuff. There has been a rise in employees receiving emails from their boss telling them to go buy gift cards for Christmas presents or whatever, then to email the codes to the boss so they can hand them out for Christmas. Nigerian princes must be reading the same studies as you. I got a few emails like this at my old job. Jokes on the scammers though. I knew it was a scammer immediately because I never received a single email from my boss the entire time I worked there. My boss handles stress terribly, so in one-on-ones, 
He tends to snap and spend the hour complaining about people. Sometimes people end up getting chewed out or yelled at in a beating that's supposed to be about their development. When I first began in my department, he noticed me putting on perfume and said his wife wears the same one. It's not anything fancy, just one that's widely known. Every time I go into my one on one with him, I apply the perfume right before. He generally speaks very softly to me and doesn't snap at me like he does with others. And I'm pretty sure it's because he smells me and thinks of his wife. Ducked up that it takes that to get a manager to treat you humanely, but it works. If you want to really mess with someone go up to them and ask them, hey do you ever get that creepy deja vu feeling? Then like a week later wear the same thing and ask them the same question. I've done this to so many people and their reactions are hilarious. I think I might start pranking my students with this. Wahahaha. <laughs> I like this except to be less blatant you should try getting someone else help coordinate a fake conversation instead. Example. 1. Get a script 2. You both are wear same outfit 3. Read the convo 6 months later. Point out something that someone does all the time. One of my co-workers would leave the office at the end of the day and forget his headphones. So he'd leave the office and have to run in a game to grab them. I told him I noticed he always forgot his headphones. And how he's self-conscious about it and never forgets them anymore. That actually seems more helpful than duckful. Hey Brad, I notice how you never get your work done every day. Offer somebody gum but don't take a piece for yourself. Look at the pack, flip it over, and say okay as you put it back into your pocket. Came to this thread as I am the beloved nuisance friend. This is one of the ones I'm gonna do, and I don't even chew gum. Tell your family you're going to get cigarettes, and then never come back. Psychologically duck em good. Good one dad. Financially ducks them too. Wave to random people in public, and when they wave back look at them confused and point behind them. They'll be crying about the awkwardness until they start their new life in another country. Edit. Thanks for gold. But still why? Who the duck does this lil mayo? Psychopaths. When meeting someone for the first time say oh hello again and shake their hand even if they go for like a high five transfer it into a handshake. They will not ask for your name or any information they will just think that you definitely know them from somewhere and they just forgot. I do this a lot by accident with conversations. I will say like I was saying, or again, or whatever, only to realize several sentences later, after it's awkward to go back and explain that I said this to someone else entirely several weeks months ago, and this is the first time I've ever said this thing to this person. When I get excited my brain forgets things like how time works and other people aren't a hiver mind. Other people aren't a hiver mind, or so you think. Look distractedly at their nose or some part of their face, then scratch or rub the corresponding part on your own face, they'll supposedly get confused and think they have something on them. This was from the book Mind Control, The Ancient Art of Psychological Warfare by the dubiously named Hao Lung. My emotionally unstable brother bought this book and I had to see what the hell he was actually reading. The author sounds like a nutcase through his writing. His real name is Ashida Kim. No actually that's fake too. Radford Davis. He's a self-trained wannabe ninja. Who sells fake certifications ABD post dubious info on martial arts and secret ninja techniques from his trailer in Florida. I have never seen ninja spelt with a hard R before. If you're close quartered with someone, you can intentionally choose one word out of the lexicon to mispronounce. Swear up and down that your way is the correct way, and the correct way is actually the wrong but popular version. After months of intentionally mispronouncing the word shrimp my mother now says scrimp it's been 2 years and I can't undo this help. That's wild. My father says Walmart instead of Walmart. I tried correcting him 100 times and obviously say Walmart myself. But he was always like oh okay, Walmart, and never changed how he says it. Don't worry, you can hardly notice it. My penis? Say have a good day and then follow it with something applicable only to them. Then watch them say thanks you too only to realize what they said doesn't make sense. I do this with Uber Eats drivers all the time. Have a great day. Drive safe. Thanks. You too. Wait. I like to be on the other side of that. I'll say thanks you too purposefully in situations like that. Most commonly at the movies when the ticket checker tells me to enjoy the movie. 
Hi, how are you? Thanks, you too. If you have access to their computer, take a screenshot of their desktop and set that screenshot as their new desktop image. Then hide all the icons in a folder. They'll go nuts trying to click the images but they're just part of the wallpaper. Bonus! Flip the image upside down before setting it to their wallpaper. Then set the display orientation to flipped. They'll be convinced their mouse is balked. Another is to set up a script that does something unexpected. Like shut down their computer. And replace an often used desktop shortcuts target to point to it. They click payroll. XLS spreadsheet icon. Their computer shuts down. Take it easy there Satan. If somebody is talking and talking giving you no chance to say what you want to say drop something very loud on the floor then begin to talk. I just imagined myself at someone's house dropping an antique vase or something just to get my voice heard like some kind of lunatic and think that would be hilarious. That's called being a cat. I can make my pupils really big on command. It's some weird thing. So I'll be having a conversation both looking at each other and slowly I'll begin to increase the size of my pupils until it's at the max and the person I'm speaking to will kinda stop the conversation and be all like um wtf. Is it possible to learn this power? Apparently it is https colon slash slash www com dilate or shrink your pupils on command. Not really how to duck with someone. But if you're sitting on a bus or train and don't want someone sitting next to you, don't put your bag on the seat. Someone will ask you to move it so that they can sit down. Instead, as someone walks by, pat the empty seal whilst making direct eye contact with them and smiling. Works 9 out of 10 times. But the one time it doesn't work. Good luck. Edit. I know I put seal instead of seat. But I think it's funny so I refuse to change it. Doesn't work if you're attractive. Tell someone you want to play rock paper scissors. As you're both getting ready to count down. Compliment their shirt or something to throw them off and start counting down. Then. You pick rock. When you interrupt someone's concentration during the game. They automatically go to the most recent thing in their head which will be scissors. Rock. Paper. Scissors. It works every time until they realize you're ducking with them. OMG, my BF likes to challenge me to rock paper scissors all the time when something needs to be done that neither of us feel like doing. Small things like getting up to fill a glass of water. I stopped playing because I kept losing. Now I have a trick to try next time. Update, IT worked. To make it even more effective, compliment their scissors. Adding real quick to the end of a request adds a sense of urgency that compels people to do whatever you tell them. Example, Darry, give me your wallet real quick, and before you know it, Darry hands you his wallet. For me is also powerful when asking someone to do something. People like to think they are doing a favor for someone as opposed to just performing an action after being ordered. I had a friend that would casually eat a slice of American cheese while taking orders at a particularly rude table. Not say anything other than normally asking what they wanted to eat. Bite of cheese. It would immediately make the guy trying to impress his date by being awful to the server totally docile because it was so awkward. My favorite is the slight lean and making a face like you're farting. I only use it to duck with people. I don't actually fart. It'll derail any conversation. Pro tip. Actually fart. Then make a worried face. Especially in my teenage years it freaked people out to not react angrily to their tries of bullying insulting you. At some point I even agreed with them on certain topics. That got them extremely confused. Edit. Typo. Or oh yeah, after a while. This was my go-to tactic as a frequently bullied teenage girl. If someone said some mean shit about me, I'd say something meaner about myself. And they'd instantly back off. E. G. Them. Damn. You ugly as hell. Me. Yeah. Dog. And I'm chubby too. You see this double chin? Gross. Then they are just silent. I considered it a power move. They could never be as mean to me as I am. And I just made them uncomfortable. I did this in middle high school. It got to the point where people started angrily and aggressively complimenting me. Where I ducked up is that it became so second nature I started inadvertently arguing with them about it. Open bracket. Essentially bullying myself while my opponent would be sticking up for me. No. I am not a smart man. 
when they are angry with you simply say, you seem upset, what's the matter, then smile, open bracket, if that doesn't work, punch them in the throat. Ah, the old disarming smile followed by throat punch, gets them every time. Prolonged smiles, it stops people dead in their tracks, I personally love to do it when someone's chatting shit, you gaze directly into their eyes so they lock theirs on you in return and then plaster a ginormous grin on your face, sometimes it directly gives the message you are unimpressed and they stop, if they don't, you continue to maintain eye contact and smile the exact same way, they'll become increasingly uncomfortable and lose their train of thought. It's also good to use at random times. Sometimes I'll just smile for a long time at my friends and you're able to see them physically writhe in discomfort at it. Smiling in such a way gives people a massive sense of insecurity. No matter who you are because you feel the spotlight has unexpectedly been turned on you and you don't know why. Edit. The last paragraph is awkwardly worded. I don't purposefully give my friends insecurity or try to harm them. Within my friend groups it's all within good fun. The discomfort usually results in laughter at the breaking point of tension from both parties. With close friends, it should go without saying that with people you aren't close with, it's not going to leave a good impression and will probably cloud their vision. You should only be doing this seriously to people you can't stand, or as a method of communicating disapproval in a situation where you can't speak without causing disruption. Communal gatherings, customer service and the sort, and of course, this method is provocative. It's fun and amazing when used correctly, but provocative nonetheless. Most of the time it'll shut people up, but if used against a volatile or vile person in general, it'll likely lead to an escalation. Just be aware of who you do this to if anything. A safer but equally effective technique is pure silence, but this only works in a one-one conversation. Stop responding and they'll stop bullshitting. But in a group of people, which is more likely, the smile is much better. That's pure evil. I'm impressed. I do this to customers that come and just yell at me. I let them say their piece then refute what I can. But if they want to keep ranting at me I just go totally serene and smile at them. I don't say anything until they're done. And then I say, I'm so sorry about this inconvenience. I'll be sure to pass this on to the boss. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Most people leave in a huff. But my favorite is when they're still so riled up they throw a parting shot at me on their way out the door. It's so cowardly and it makes me laugh so hard. Of course I only do this to the crazies who make problems out of nothing. If there was an actual issue I would apologize and fix it immediately. When talking to them, stare at their nose and when they ask why you're staring at their nose tell them that you aren't. A guy never know where to look when I'm talking to people. Everything feels weird right into them look balls, but not for too long. Nursery rhymes. Hum a few bars stop then start a few bars later and repeat. If you pick one person and one song for that person it can be quite annoying especially done over a few days or weeks. Had a group of engineer overseers, three of them to be exact, that I would always use three blind mice every time they got close. Ha, huh. took them about four months to finally say please stop. Ducking gingle bells. A co-worker knew I hated Christmas music and would hum it just to irritate me. It got to the point. He would tap out the rhythm with his hammer and whatever we were working on and would watch me get red with anger each and every time because it sticks in my head for days. Just walk past someone, act depressed, and say please stop doing that it will eat at them. That's just plain evil, mate. With zero context. Ask someone who did they tell you that to then just watch as pure confusion washes over their face. The sentence means literally nothing and it is fantastic. This was bad to read while high. If you're eating with them, ask them a question as soon as they take a bite of food. Are you a waiter? Server. How's everything tasting? Me. Mouthful. MFFMMMFMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMM
If they are really smart, the bidding stops at $1 and the highest bidder agrees to split it with everyone. But there's always someone who does not trust the group or doesn't trust the $1 bidder so he bids $2. And then someone bids $3. ETC ETC. Call them something they are wearing by choice. Whatever you say. Turtleneck. Sure thing. Pink shorts yeah that'll work. Cock ring. If you turn your head to look at something people tend to mimic your behavior to see what you are looking at. It's instinctual. So I will look at random emptiness and if people look at where I am looking I ask do you see that? When they say no I reply I gotta take my meds. Or something similar. Some people have lively reactions. It's fun to duck with people's heads. Before I argue or debate with a relative, I ask them what the criteria would be for them to change their mind. If they say there's no chance, then we talk about something else. When disagreeing with someone, try replacing but with and. It is remarkably disarming disconcerting when the person you are arguing with stops arguing with you and you don't realize it. Have sex with them. Guaranteed to duck with them. It's been proven that people will stand in a long queue, even if they have no idea what it is for. People do it all the time at festivals and things. Start a queue with your friends in front of a trash bin or something innocuous. Then everyone just casually walks away after a load of people not in on the joke join the end of the queue. Alternatively, stare up at the sky like you're watching something fascinating up there. Accumulate a crowd. Shrug and leave. I always say thank you in a different language each time I get off the bus. Nice try. Duo. Say shop. Say shop again. Say shop five more times. What do you do at a green light? Reminds me of that Drake and Josh bit where Mindy was screwing with Josh Lomeo. She made him say fort like 20 times and then asked him what he ate soup with edit. Fort not fork edit too. Stop telling me it was Megan. It wasn't. Video for reference https colon slash slash yauto bgpm jquatu qpm I bike commute to and from work. I've found that when drivers road rage towards me, nothing gets under people's skin more than not being mad as well. When they yell, swear, honk, etc. All I do it laugh or do the crying pantomime and it usually sends people through the roof. They hate that I'm having a good time when they are raging. Doing that little crying pantomime to some macho car shithead would be pure bliss. I once got the thumbs down instead of being flipped off for cutting someone off in traffic. It just felt worse. Kind of psychological. Pin a spread out banknote to a dartboard over the bull seat tell someone if they hit it 3 stroke 3 times. They keep it. If they lose they owe you the equivalent amount first shot. They stand the standard distance away second shot. They take a large step forward third shot. They take two large steps backwards sounds easy, but most will fail miserably. My favorite is to bet a friend at the bar $5 that I can drink their drink without touching their glass in any way. They'll almost always take the bet, pound the drink normally and hand them $5. Most drinks at the bar around here are $12. Chuckle for a moment and by the next round, everyone has a laugh and learns a harmless new trick. Wow what a great thread for sociopaths. When they're talking glance at something behind them. Go back to making eye contact immediately. Pause for a second then glance at the same spot again but make some subtle facial expression for a split second. Like confused, concerned, intrigued, etc. They'll probably look back. If they do ask them what they're looking at before they ask you. If you've been in a space in close proximity to a stranger, elevator, library, etc and neither of you have acknowledged each other or spoken. When you go to leave say it was nice to meet you, then walk away. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.